Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice, an initiative of Rouse IAS. Here we take up important articles from the Hindu and the Indian Express and curate MCQs as per the demand of the civil services exam. Articles covered today are shown in the screen and the detailed description in PDF and Word format can be found on the description box. So let us begin. Starting off with the first article of the day which appeared on page 1 and 14 of today's Hindu newspaper. This article reports that India's merchandise exports have fell by 10.3% in May, whereas the imports have contracted at a slower rate of 6.6%. This has resulted into rise in trade deficit to a 5-month high that is of about $22 billion. Now, different components of balance of payments and their changing trends are covered in news regularly. Hence. Developments regarding them is important from prelims point of view. As you can see, in the previous year question of 2014, a question appeared on components of balance of payments. On similar lines, here's practice question number one. Which of the following are components of the current account under balance of payments? Now, balance of payments records the transaction in goods, services and assets between the residents of a country with the rest of the world for a specific period of time. There are two accounts. First is capital account and the second is current account. And this question asks us to define the component of current account. Current account is the record of trade in goods and services in addition to transfer of payments. Trade in goods includes exports and imports. Hence, component one is correct. Now, trade in services includes factor income and non-factor income transactions, whereas transfer payments are the receipts which the resident of a country get for free, that is, without having to provide any goods or services in return, and it consists of gifts, remittance, and grants, and these are given by governments or private citizens who are living abroad. Hence, gifts and remittance in third point is correct whereas 2 and 4 are components of capital account. Hence, in the context of this answer are incorrect. Now, how many of the above given components are correct? From the above discussion, we can say that only two components are correct. Hence, option B is the correct answer. Whereas PYQ is concerned, option C was the right answer. Now, moving on to the second article of the day, which appeared on page 12 of today's Hindu newspaper. This article argues over the soundness of methods of assessment and scoring indicators of the National Institutional Ranking Framework or NIRF and alleges that the ranking framework is not transparent. Now, governmental efforts to improve the education system of our country are important from exams perspective. As you can see from this PYQ of the year 2016 where a question appeared on SWEM initiative of the Government of India. On similar lines, here's practice question number 2. Consider the following statements regarding National Institutional Ranking Framework NIRF. Statement 1. It is published by Union Ministry of Education annually. Now this statement is correct as National Institutional Ranking Framework was released in the year 2016 by Ministry of Education and it ranks India's higher education institutions every year. Statement number two, it ranks different education institutes in more than 10 categories. Now this statement is also correct because the NIRF ranks different education institutions in 13 categories. These include engineering, management, pharmacy, law, medical, dental, architecture and planning, agriculture and allied sectors, colleges, universities, research, innovation and the last and 13th category is that of overall category. Statement number 3. It is based on 6 parameters. Now this statement is incorrect because the ranking framework outlines a methodology to rank institutions based on 5 parameters which are the first teaching learning and resources, the second is research and professional practices, third is graduation outcomes, Fourth is outreach and inclusivity and fifth peer perception. 
Now, how many of the above statements is or are correct? From the above discussion, we can say that two statements are correct. Hence, option B is the right answer. Whereas PYQ is concerned, option D was the right answer. Moving on to the third article of the day, which appeared on page 14 of today's Hindu newspaper. According to this article, the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation or BEMSTEC Summit will be held at the end of this year and it will adopt the Bangkok vision of the year 2030. Regional and multilateral groupings and India's participation in them forms an integral part of international relations syllabus. Hence, it is an important area of interest for UPSC as well, which is apparent from this PYQ of the year 2018 on free trade partners of ASEAN. Based on today's article, here's practice question number 3. With reference to Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation, that is BIMSTEC, consider the following statements. Statement 1. It was established by Bangkok Declaration with a permanent secretariat at Kathmandu. Now this statement is incorrect because, because the BIMSTEC is a regional organization consisting of seven member states and which came into being in the year 1997 through Bangkok Declaration. However, the permanent secretariat of this organization is in Dhaka and not Kathmandu. The second statement, the fifth summit of BIMSTEC, which was held in Sri Lanka, led to the adoption and signing of BIMSTEC Charter. Now, this statement is correct, as the main outcome of the fifth summit was the adoption and signing of BIMSTEC Charter which formalized the grouping into an organization. Statement third, Maldives was the last member to join this regional grouping in the year 2014. Now this statement is incorrect because Nepal and Bhutan were the last members that were admitted to this grouping in the year 2004. And hence, the name of this organization changed from BISTEC to BIMSTEC. Now, how many of the statements given above is or are correct. As we have seen, only one statement is correct, hence option A is the correct answer. Whereas PYQ is concerned, option C was the right answer. Now moving on to the fourth article of the day, which appeared on page 16 of today's Hindu newspaper. This article reports that approximately 80 more castes in six different states are now likely to be added to the central list of other backward classes or the OBCs, as the National Commission for Backward Classes has already processed the approval for most of them. Now, constitutional and statutory bodies have been asked by UPSC frequently in prelims examinations. And this trend can be seen from this year's PYQ on constitutional bodies. Based on today's article, here's practice question number 4. With reference to National Commission for Backward Classes, consider the following statements. Statement 1. The concurrence of the Office of Registrar General of India is mandatory for the addition of communities to the central OBC list. Now this statement is incorrect because unlike the procedures to add communities of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes to its list, addition of central OBC list does not have to rely on concurrence of Office of Registrar General of India or any authority other than NCBC. Statement 2. According to the constitution, the power to identify socially and educationally backward classes in different states is granted to the state governments. Now, this statement also is incorrect because it is the president who has the authority to name socially and educationally backward classes in various states and union territories. In conjugation with governors of the relevant state, the president may take this action. However, if the list of disadvantaged class is to be changed, the bill needs to be passed by the Parliament of India. Now, which of the statements given above is or are correct? As both of the statements are incorrect, hence option D is the right answer. Whereas PYQ is concerned, option A was the right answer. Moving on to the fifth article of the day, which appeared on page 18 of today's Hindu newspaper. This article reports that the National Bank for Financing, Infrastructure and Development or the NAPFID 
has raised rupees 10000 crores by issuance of listed bonds in its maiden issuance as investment in the infrastructure is considered as a key driver for growth and development in the economy hence government's effort for long term financing is important from prelims point of view as you can see from this previous year question of 2015 a question appeared on indian renewable energy development agency on similar lines here's practice question number 5 Consider the following statements with the reference to National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development or NAPFIT. Statement 1. The NAPFIT has been set up under the Reserve Bank of India Act as a developmental financial institution. This statement is incorrect. As proposed in Budget 2021 and 22, the NAPFIT was set up through National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development Act of the year 2021. As a development financial institution to support the development of long-term infrastructure financing in India. Statement 2. It is regulated and supervised as an All India Financing Institution by the Reserve Bank of India. Now this statement is correct because as per RBI Act of the year 1934, RBI regulates All India Financial Institutions and NAPFID is the fifth such financial institution. The first was Exim Bank, NABARD, National Housing Bank, and SIDBI. Statement 3rd. NABFID can borrow money from multilateral institutions, sovereign wealth funds, and other foreign funds. Now, this statement is correct because NABFID raises from multiple sources such as Central Government, Reserve Bank of India, Scheduled Commercial Banks, Mutual Funds, and multilateral institutions. And the Government of India provides a sovereign guarantee at a concessional rate of 0.1% for borrowing from multilateral institutions, sovereign wealth funds and other foreign funds. Now, how many of the above given statements are incorrect? As we have seen, only one statement is incorrect, hence option A is the right answer. Whereas PYQ is concerned, option C was the right answer. Now moving on to the last article of the day and this appeared in Indian Express, page 15. As SEBI is responsible for regulation of India's securities market and in this context of today's article, it reports that SEBI has issued orders against the errant market participants such as Mr. Subhash Chandra. Now, sound capital markets are key for macroeconomic stability of the economy and hence, developments regarding them are important from exam's point of view, which is apparent from this PYQ of the year 2021. On similar lines, here's practice question number 6. With reference to Securities Exchange Board of India or SEBI, consider the following statements. Statement 1. It was established as a statutory body since its inception. Now, this statement is incorrect because the Securities Exchange an exchange board of India was constituted as a non-statutory body in the year 1988 through a resolution of Government of India. However, post-security scam, SEBI was given a statutory recognition by Securities and Exchange Board of India Act of the year 1992. Hence, it is a statutory body but not since its inception. Statement 2. Decisions of SEBI are final and binding and it cannot be questioned in the court of law. This statement also is incorrect because as seen from the article, it is the Securities Appellate Tribunal that has been constituted in order to protect the interest of entities that feel aggrieved by SEBI's decision. SAT has same powers as vested in a civil court. Further, if a person is still aggrieved by SAT's decision, he can file an appeal to the Supreme Court of India. Now, which of the statements given above is or are correct? As both statements are incorrect, hence option D is the right answer. Whereas PYQ is concerned, option B is the right answer.